let us now start with the phase lead and phase lag compensators. So here we are using the word compensators for PID we use the word controllers. So is there any difference or do both of them mean the same? So there is a slight difference but at this point of time you don't need to differentiate both of them. You can consider both of them similar only at this stage of study. All right. So what is this phase lead and phase lag compensators? Whether it is a lead or a lag compensator, the transfer function is going to have 1, 0 and 1 pole. Now depending on whether the 0 is closer to the j omega axis or whether the pole is closer to the j omega axis, we have the lead and lag compensator. So you can go by the name itself. Lead, phase lead. That means we increase the phase. So that means the 0 should be dominating in the phase lead. Dominating means it is closer to the j omega axis. right? So if you see the S plane, then if you have the 0 here and pole here, this means that the 0 is dominating. In this case, we call it as a phase lead compensator. Okay. Now from here, you can guess the phase lag as well. In the lag, the pole will be dominating. So this is going to be minus P1. This is minus Z1. Okay. So this is phase lag. You can also write the mathematical relation here. Phase lead, the 0 is closer to the j omega axis means minus Z1 is greater than minus P1. So that means Z1 is less than P1. In the phase lag, similarly, minus P1 is greater than minus Z1. This means that P1 is lesser than Z1. Now for our mathematical purpose, the transfer function instead of writing it in the pole 0 form, this is the pole 0 form, right? We write it as, write it in the time constant form, but how do we write it? 1 plus Ts divided by 1 plus Ats. So that means we are not using 1 plus T1s by 1 plus T2s, not two different variables T1 and T2. We are going to instead write it as 1 plus Ts by 1 plus A. Ts. Now depending on the value of A, it is going to be either a phase lead or a phase lag compensator. You can see for yourself, this means that the pole is minus 1 by A t and the 0 is minus 1 by t. So what will happen if A is greater than 1? This means that A t will be greater than t. So if you invert it, 1 by A t will be less than 1 by t. Now again if you put the negative sign, again the sign will invert. So minus 1 by a t will be greater than minus 1 by t. So you see that minus 1 by a t is the pole here. The pole is greater means that it is the phase lag compensator. So if a is greater than 1, it means that this, this is a phase lag compensator because of this. Similarly, you can see that if A is less than 1, then you are going to get minus 1 by A t will be less than minus 1 by t, making it a phase lead compensator. Okay, So this is for A less than 1. Now we will see the phase lead compensator. What are the effects of it? So what is the transfer function? This is 1 plus t s by 1 plus a t s where what is the a condition a should be less than 1. If you draw the Bode plot the magnitude Bode plot is going to look something like this. At 1 by t the slope will increase and again the next corner frequency is 1 by a t. Okay? There the slope will reduce. So this is the magnitude Bode plot. What about the phase Bode plot? So you write here, this is magnitude and this is phase. Okay. So here what is going to happen? There is going to be a phase like this. Okay. So at one point there will be a maximum phase. Here you are going to have 1 by t 
and here you are going to have 1 by 80. Now this shift here you call it as the maximum phase shift. Okay, So we usually represent it as phi m and the frequency at which it is occurring we can take it as omega m. We will now try to find out how to obtain this maximum phase. Okay, So if you write the expression for phase of the transfer function, this is going to be tan inverse omega t minus tan inverse a omega t. Okay, So now if we want the maximum phase shift, we have to differentiate this with respect to the frequency. So d by d omega of tan inverse omega t minus tan inverse a t omega and then you have to equate it to 0. So you will get a value for omega that value will be nothing but omega m. Okay? So this is going to be if you differentiate this you are going to get 1 plus omega t whole square into t minus 1 by 1 plus a omega t whole square into a t. This is equal to 0. Okay? So you can do the calculations. I will write the final expression. You are going to get omega is equal to 1 by root a into t. This you can also express as root over 1 by a t into 1 by t because 1 by a t is the one corner frequency and 1 by t is the other corner frequency. So this is essentially the geometric mean of both the fre corner frequencies. Okay, So you can write geometric mean of corner frequencies. Okay, So this is the final expression omega m is equal to root over 1 by a t into 1 by t. This is a easier way of re remembering. If you can remember omega is equal to 1 by root a into t well enough. Okay, So from here you can find out the maximum shift. Right? What will be the maximum shift now? phi m is equal to the transfer function when omega is equal to omega m. So this is going to be tan inverse omega t minus tan inverse a omega t. Right? So instead of omega you will write omega m here. So this is going to be tan inverse 1 by root a minus tan inverse a. This is what you are going to get root a. Okay? So tan inverse a minus tan inverse b formula if you apply the final answer you are going to get tan inverse 1 minus a by 2 root a. So that means you can write as tan phi m is equal to 1 minus a by 2 root a. Okay? So this is going to be the expression for the maximum phase shift. Now we have obtained the expressions for phi m and omega m, the maximum phase shift and the frequency at which the maximum phase shift occurs provided that we know a and t. But in practicality what is going to happen? These phi m will be known because this is like a specification. I want to design a compensator which has this much amount of phase shift at this much amount of frequency. Okay? So for that what will be the values of a and t that I should be choosing. So for that reason what we do is we want to get the expression for a and t when phi m and omega m are known. So how do you do that? So here we will construct a right angle triangle. This is phi m angle let us say. Now tan phi m we have already found out. 1 minus a by 2 root a. But according to this, we can write this as 1 minus a and this as 2 root a. So that tan phi m will be 1 minus a by 2 root a. Now what will be the length of hypotenuse? In this case, the length of hypotenuse we can find out as root over 1 minus a whole square plus 2 root a whole square. Okay. So this if you find out you are going to get 1 minus 2a plus a square plus 4a. So what you are going to get here? 
root over 1 plus a whole square this is 1 plus a. So the length of this hypotenuse is going to be 1 plus a. From here you can write down sin phi m is going to be 1 minus a by 1 plus a. So from here a expression you can get 1 minus sin phi m divided by 1 plus sin phi m. Okay. Now in this way once you find out a then you can use the expression of 1 by a t into 1 by t root of this is going to be equal to omega m. Now omega m is known here, a is known here, you can find out t. In this way if omega m and phi m are given, you can find out a and t. Now we will see what are the effects of a phase lead compensator. So we, we saw the various effects of adding a zero and a pole when we were discussing the time domain analysis, right? Some of the times the effect is not really something that you can predict. But by trial and error and by properly choosing the position of pole and zero, how far it is close to origin, how far it is away from each other, all of these things taken into consideration, we can generalize that it is going to have some of these effects, okay? So the very first one is it will improve the damping. That means the transient response is improved. Okay. And it will improve the speed of response. So that means the rise time is going to reduce. Then the bandwidth is going to increase. Because we, we know that uh, rise time and bandwidth they are inversely proportional so if rise time is decreasing then bandwidth is going to increase and the steady state error is going to remain unaffected steady state error is unaffected and finally stability is improved Next we will see the phase lag compensator. So what will be the transfer function? The form is going to be same only 1 plus T s by 1 plus A T s but here A is greater than 1. It was less than 1 for a lead compensator. Now what is the Bode plot going to look like? The magnitude Bode plot if you see first it is going to be like this 0 initially and then it will decrease negative value it will become and then it will once again it will become constant okay so this is the magnitude plot what is the corner frequency here it is 1 by 80 because 1 by 80 is now less in phase lead 1 by t was lesser than 1 by 80 right so this is 1 by t now what about the phase just invert whatever you have got in phase lead compensator the inverse of it will be what you will see in phase lag compensator. So this is the phase Bode plot. Here it is going to be 1 by 80 and here it is going to be 1 by t. What will be this frequency? At the maximum phase shift we will take it as omega m and this magnitude is the maximum phase shift we represent it as phi m. Now what are the expressions for omega m and phi m? It will be same as what we saw in the phase lead compensator. Okay, So what was omega m? This was equal to root over 1 by a t into 1 by t. This is the expression for omega m. Then what about phi m? This is equal to tan inverse or you can write tan phi m is equal to tan phi m is equal to 1 minus a by 2 root a. Okay. Now once you get these expression then similarly you can express a in terms of phi m. a and t you can get. Okay. So what will that be? a is equal to 1 minus sin phi m divided by 1 plus sin phi m. This is the same expression that you saw in phase lead capacitor as well, compensator as well. Okay. So the one thing that you can 
easily remember here is whether it is phase lag or phase lead this expression is common right now what happens in phase lag here we have phi m will be negative phi m is a negative value right so when sine phi m the uh, sine of some negative value will give a negative value so 1 plus some value and here 1 minus some value will come so what will happen to a a will be greater than 1 so you can write if phi m is negative less than 0 this implies a is greater than 1 and this is what happens in a lag compensator now if phi m is greater than 0 that means it is a lead compensator so in the same expression if phi m is greater than 0 then 1 minus positive value divided by 1 plus positive value it will give you a to be less than 1 so here a will be less than 1 this is what is required in a lead compensator so you can just remember this expression don't remember for phase lag and lead separately you don't have to remember just remember the same expression and phi m you take negative if it is a lag compensator if it is lead then it will be positive automatically the correct answer is going to come now what are the effects of phase lag compensator so the first one is it will reduce the steady state error reduces steady state error so in phase lead compensator this was not happening and here the bandwidth will be less and because the bandwidth is less the rise time is going to increase that means the response will be much slower slower speed of response and finally this will also improve the stability so in phase lead we know that there is an addition of phase so we can understand there why the stability is increasing why is the stability increasing here so we will see that in the next lecture and finally we have also a combination that is lead and lag together will be used so it is either lead lag or lag lead compensator in this way you get the best out of both of them if you consider a phase lead compensator what are the prominent advantages that you get here faster response and a higher bandwidth okay and what about for a phase lag compensator the prominent advantage that you have here is the steady state error is reduced reduced steady state error okay so both of these advantages can be combined if you use a lead lag or a lag lead capacitor so what will be the transfer function in this case it is going to have two zeros and two poles one of which will form the lead part and the lag part so 1 plus t1s by 1 plus a1 into t1s into 1 plus t2s by 1 plus a2 into t2s okay so let us say this is the lead compensator and this is the lag compensator then what can you say about the uh, a1 and a2 values a1 is going to be less than 1 for a lead compensator and a2 is going to be greater than 1 and if you see the pole 0 plot then you can see that sometimes the lag will be more dominant and sometimes the lead compensator will be more dominant depending on where the zeros and poles are okay so for example if you take the zero here and the pole here this is for the phase lead so this is going to be minus 1 by t1 minus 1 by a1 t1 right so this is a phase lead pole zero plot now the phase lag let us say it is here so this is going to be minus 1 by a2 t2 and this is going to be minus 1 by t2 okay so now this will form the lead part and this will form the lag part so here what is dominating the lead is more dominating so we can call it as lead lag uh, compensator okay similarly what will be can write down here this is a lead lag compensator similarly you will have a 
lag lead compensator so what is going to happen here the lag is going to be more dominant so here you have the pole and zero this is minus 1 by a2 t2 this is minus 1 by t2 and here you have the lead compensator minus 1 by t1 and this is minus 1 by a1 t1 okay so you can write here this is the lag part and this is the lead part okay and here this is more dominant the lag part and that is why we call it as lag lead compensator you can draw the bode plot as well for the lead lag compensator how will the magnitude plot be so it's going to be since lead is more dominant it is going to first increase and then it will be constant here and then it will reduce back again because of the effect of the lag compensator then what about the this is the magnitude plot what about the phase plot so here you're going to have the plot you can just draw points here because this is the points where the peak will occur right so the plot it will increase like this it will come down and then once again it will increase here okay so this is the phase plot here you can mark the corner frequencies as well this is 1 by t1 1 by a t1 and here you're going to have 1 by a2 t2 this is a1 t1 okay and here this is 1 by t2 similarly for lag lead also you can draw okay so the magnitude plot is going to be just the inverse it will come down like this and then go back up again okay and similarly the phase plot is going to be the inverse of lead lag compensator the peaks will occur somewhat here so first we will have the negative peak here because this is a lag lead compensator and then positive peak will occur okay so these are the body plots